Hello students, my name is Irene Chong and I'm a librarian at Rio Hondo College Library. And in this video, I'm going to show you the different ways you can find and access primary source articles. This video is meant to help you with your assignment to find a primary source uh, article where you have to identify the seven components of scientific literature and the article must be published within the last five years. So let's get started. So obviously there are multiple ways to find primary source articles. Uh, one would be obviously in print in the library, but with the campus closure, since we can't access the physical library building, you'll have to rely on the internet to find primary sources. So one way on the web you can find primary sources would be using Google or Google Scholar. Now, even though Google and Google Scholar is free and easy to use, you may hit paywalls where the website will ask you to pay extra money to access the full article. But as your li friendly librarian, I'm here to show you the free ways you can access primary source articles. And one, one of them being Public Library of Science. And here's the URL and I'm going to show you how to search it. So here is the biology section of Public Library of Science. Uh, Public Library of Science is an open access journal source. Open access meaning that this publisher and its authors want to freely uh, have their research articles uh, available to the public free of charge. So any articles you find here are going to be free. And uh, since PLOS is a scholarly peer-reviewed publication, so you'll find more than likely will find primary and maybe some secondary sources on this uh, website. And you can access PLOS Biology with this URL. So to begin searching, we can use go to this search box here and search uh, whatever topic we're interested in with biology. And we can, I'll just select electronic cigarettes as an example. And by the way, PLOS uh, Biology, Biology is just one of the sections that they spe specialize in. There are other areas of science that PLOS uh, has sections for, but since this is Biology 200, I'm selected Biology. And so, but anyway, here is the s uh, search results for when I, we search electronic cigarettes. Now, depending on your topic, you might get little to no results. For example, if we search COVID-19, we'll probably get about five or maybe less results because it's a new topic, it's a new virus. So we, there needs to be more time for uh, information to be published on that topic. But with electronic cigarettes, it's been around for a while, so there's a good amount of research done and you'll find a healthy number of search results here. So on the search results uh, page here, we can use these filters to narrow down our search results. Uh, I think this would be a helpful filter here under article type. Let's select research articles so we can take out all the short reports and community page uh, articles. And now we only should be looking at research articles uh, when we for, on the topic of electronic cigarettes. And just an example, I'll select the first article, I'll click on the title of that article, and then it'll take me to the page for this article, it'll, it'll give me the abstract, which is the summary of what the article is about. And after reading the abstract, if you're interested in reading the entire article, you can scroll all the way a little bit down more where it says introduction, and this is the beginning of the full article. And Already on the left side, you can see that uh, it already kind of uh, breaks down the components of the scientific literature. So there's the abstract, author summary, introduction, results, discussion, methodology, etc., etc., and last but not least, references. So it already kind of helps you on identifying the key components of scientific literature. And uh, if you wanted to save this article for later reading, you can download the PDF file, you can print it, you can share it uh, via email or other uh, social media aspects. Uh, and um, if you wanted to get the citation of this source, you kind of have to look for it here. But here is the citation for this article. It looks like it's an APA format. Uh, but even though this uh, source has provided the citation of this article, it's not 100% correct. 
uh, the title of the publication should be italicized, but it's not. So um, even though a lot of these websites and databases can give you the citation, it's still your responsibility to make sure that the citation format is correct when it appears in your research paper. So that is PLOS Biology. So the next resource we're going to be covering is Biomed Central BMC, and we can access this database with this URL here. So Biomed Central is an open access, UK-based, privately owned but freely publicly available database uh, where you can search through three, over 300 peer-reviewed scholarly journal sources, and we can explore the different kinds of journals that they have here with this tab at the top. But just to get started in searching, we can click on the search tab here and a search box will appear. Uh, to be, just to, for the sake of consistency, let's continue searching for electronic cigarettes. So here are my search results on electronic cigarettes. I got 6,000 plus results. Uh, as you can kind of already see in our search results page, it's a little more simple than PLOS. There aren't options for filtering and whatnot. The only way you can kind of like filter or organize your search results is by either relevance or date. Uh, but let's select the first article as an example and see what it looks like here. So, so here's this article, it's giving us the abstract and on the right side it gives you the different sections of this article. And right off the bat, there isn't a section for methodologies. And usually that's a big sign that this article isn't a primary source, because uh, most of the time primary sources need to uh, conduct their own original research and they would list how they conducted their original research in the methodology section. So I, I'm, by looking through the, this article, we can kind of tell that the author didn't uh, make their own data, they didn't uh, collect their own data, uh, they just kind of did their own research like we are and kind of summarizing what they've found in their research like they're reporting what the who found here and so this is more than likely a secondary source and not a primary source so let's go back to our search results list here and um, this article looks a little promising too but remember that you need to find a primary source that was published within the last uh, five years this is from 2014 so it's not going to work but if we scroll down a little bit more maybe this one looks promising this was published in March of 2020 click here so here on this page it gives us the t article title the authors here the the journal that it's published in, the year it was published, and then we can kind of see the sections of the article here. So the abstract gives us the background, methods, results, and just by kind of skimming through uh, them describing the methodology, you can tell that this is a primary source because they've collected their own data and conducted their own original research. And you can also see the sections of this article on the right side here. and. Uh, so this would be a good article to use uh, for selecting as a primary source. It's published within the last five years. And after, and after reading the abstract, if you find that the article is, is, is good and works for your research topic, you can continue on down and read the full article here. All right, so it's freely available. It doesn't ask you to pay extra to read the full article. Uh, other ways you can uh, save this article for later reading, you can download the PDF file here. You can also uh, cite this article. So if you click on cite this article, it takes us to the bottom of the page. And here is the citation for this article. And like most databases, sometimes the citation isn't always perfect. So it's still your responsibility to make sure that the format is correct when it appears in your research paper. And uh, you can get a shareable link if you want to share it that way or save, it, save the article for later reading that way. And uh, that's pretty much it for BMC. So, so far we've only covered freely available sources on the web to find primary source articles. But here at Rio Hondo College Library and as a Rio Hondo College student, you have access to thousands of scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles through our library databases. So to access it, uh, you have to get to our library website, and the easiest way to get to it would be to start at the Rio Hondo College homepage, and you'll find our library link right here in one of the uh, icons at the very first page you see. 
and here is our library website. We have tons of information here to help you with your research, uh, but for today's focus we want to focus on databases. So to access it, you can go to our left side menu here and select Articles and Databases. And it'll open up a page listing all the databases that we subscribe to. Now it's a lot, uh, but we're only going to be using two databases that are going to be the most useful to you for this assignment. And you can find it under our Popular Databases box here, and it's going to be the first two databases, EBSCO and ProQuest. So let's go ahead and click on EBSCO. Now, it's asking us to log in with our Access Rio account because EBSCO isn't a free resource like PLOS and Biomed Central. Uh, EBSCO is a resource that the Rio Hondo College Library pays for. And so in order to make sure that EBSCO knows that you are a Rio Hondo College student and you have free access to this database, you have to log in with your Access Rio username and password if you are searching off campus. And since everyone should be working remotely and doing remote learning, uh, everyone will have to log in with their Access Rio username and password. And uh, it's, 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 it's also very important that you access our databases through our website because if you just Google the name EBSCO, thinking that Google will give you the link to the EBSCO database, it won't. It will actually just give you their corporate website and tell you that it will cost this much to access their database. And you don't want to pay extra. It's, it's, it costs almost thousands of dollars to get access to this database. And we at, here at Rio Hondo College Library, we've already paid for access for you. So save yourself the money and the trouble. Don't Google the, the database's name and just go to our library website and access our databases this way. So let's log in. I'm going to log in with my Access Rio username and password. And here is what EBSCO database looks like. And in this database, we can find magazine articles, newspaper articles, and scholarly journal articles. And, and, but there are ways to filter those other results out so that we can only get scholarly peer-reviewed articles that are going to be primary sources. So uh, let's stick to the theme of searching for electronic cigarettes and click search. And as you can see, we got about 14,000 results. Now, that's a lot. And uh, we're all, you know, as a hardworking student, it's going to take too much time to look over 14,000 results. So we need to narrow this down a little bit more. On the left side, there are options to filter down your results. So let's, under here where it says limit to, we want to select limit to scholarly peer reviewed journals only. So let's click that checkbox there. And now our results have gone down to 3,900 uh, plus results. And we can narrow it down even more. Uh, remember that for the primary source article you are searching, it needs to be published within the last five years. So let's change the publication date here from 2015 oops, to 2020. So from 2015 to 2020, click Enter. And it, it, it cut out some of the more results, but it's still we're still at 3,000 uh, results. And we can narrow it down a little bit more, too, if we add additional keywords. So if you wanted to search something more specific in regards to electronic cigarettes, like maybe you only wanted to research electronic cigarettes regarding teenagers, let's just put teen and click search. And now we're down to 202 results. So that is definitely a lot more manageable than searching 14,000 results. And, uh, and as you'll notice too, like all these search parameters, they're a lot more sophisticated than the free resources we were looking at in Public Library of Science and Biomed Central. And this is what you're paying for. This is what you earn. This is the extra perk for being a Rio Hondo College student is that you have access to these databases and a lot of articles you find here, like normally you'd have to pay for it if you find it, if you try to search for it on Google, but we have paid access in EBSCO, so all these articles that you find here are going to be freely available and you don't have to pay extra to read the full article. So let's start looking through our search results here and by kind of going through the search results, let's go ahead and I'll just pick the first one as an example. So if you click on the title of the article, it gives you who the authors are, where it's published in, 
some of the subject terms. And here is the abstract again, which is the summary of what the article is about. And it, it already kind of tells you, it already sections out the article based on objectives and also based on, it's kind of hard to see the different sections in this abstract here, but if you wanted to actually see the full article, there are two options to view the full article. One is HTML full text. HTML full text just means that the article is available on the database itself and you can start reading it from here. And then it kind of also, and you can already start seeing the components of scientific literature here, introduction, materials and methods, uh, etc. Uh, so that's HTML full text and it's just the full article uh, available to read on, on your browser. And if you click on PDF full text, PDF full text is the scan of the original print article, and this is what the article looks like. And I pr usually prefer PDF because you get to read the article the way it was meant to be presented. You'll get to see pictures and figures and data and charts that way uh, in, in the proper order you're supposed to read the article through. Uh, but, but yeah, this is the full article. Here's the introduction, materials and methods, results, discussion, and last but not least, all the way in the bottom should be our uh, conclusion and references, which is right here. So that is the PDF full text of this article. But if we click back and back again to our original page here, there are ways where you can save the article for later reading. You can email it to yourself. You can click on this email link here and type in your email address here. You can also save it to your Google Drive. You can print it if you have a printer. And uh, and you can also cite the article as well. So if you click on cite, um, here is the different citations that you can uh, gather. Um, here is the APA citation if you prefer to do APA. Uh, we also have MLA too. MLA is another popular citation style. Uh, but like. Just like the other resources we went over, sometimes the citation isn't always perfect, so it is always, always, always your, responsible, your, your responsibility to make sure that the citation is in the correct format in your research paper. Uh, I also forgot uh, that you can also download the PDF file. So if you have the PDF file open, you can click on download PDF at the top right here, and you can save the article as a PDF that way to, if you wanted to read it later. So that is how to search in EBSCO, and that's how you find primary sources in EBSCO. So navigating back to our library databases page, we're ready to go over our final database to help us find primary source articles, and that database is ProQuest, which is located just underneath EBSCO under Popular Databases. So let's go ahead and click on ProQuest. And since we've already logged in with our Access Rio username and password to access EBSCO, we don't have to do the same for ProQuest. It still remembers us. And uh, so here's what ProQuest looks like. And we can start searching in any of these search boxes here. So I'm just going to keep this simple and continue looking for electronic cigarettes. And it already asks us if we want to limit to peer-reviewed sources. So we want to check that so that um, this will include or take out all the articles that are more than likely not going to be primary sources. So let's click on check that click that checkbox for peer reviewed and click search. And here are our search results. We got over 21,000 results. And also remember that we want our sources to be published within the last five years. So also on the left side, you can continue filtering out our results. Under publication date, we can click on last five years. So click that. And now our results are going to be narrowed down to 10,111 results. And just like in EBSCO, we can modify the search and add additional keywords. You can click on modify search here to add additional keywords. Uh, but um, as you can see, it's very similar to the way you can search in EBSCO. It's just the interface is a little different. And uh, I'm just going to pick a random article here, click on the title of the article to get access to more information on the article, 
And for this article in particular, here's the title, the authors, the journal it's published in, the year it was published, and here is the abstract of what the article is about. And this article, uh, it already gives us the option for full text, so if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, here's the table of contents and scroll down some more, and here's the start of the full article uh, methods and results, etc. So this is kind of the equivalent of HTML full text of this article. You can also access the full text in PDF format. So if we click on this tab here for full text PDF, here is the PDF uh, scan of the original print article, the way it was uh, originally presented when it was published. And here's the abstract and it's all it's still the same article, it's just formatted differently, displayed differently, uh, but the content is still the same. So here is the PDF uh, full text right here. And you can uh, save this article. If you want to save the PDF, you can click on save here, or you can also download the PDF with this link here as well. Uh, you can also email the article to yourself, and you can also get the citation. So if you click on cite, it de defaults to the MLA 7th edition, but you can click on this drop down uh, box here and you can select different uh, citation styles. So if you want to pick the latest version of MLA 8th, you can. If you want APA, you can select APA 6th edition. Here you go, and there's the APA citation. And that is the quick version of how to use ProQuest to find primary source articles. So those are the four resources you can use to find primary source articles for your assignment. If you find yourself that you need additional research help from a librarian, there are multiple ways to get in touch with one. One way is, well, any way to contact a librarian, start at the library website. You can email a librarian, and if you, if by clicking on this link here, contact us online form, this will send a direct email to our library email account. You can also chat with a librarian. Our chat box is in this, located in this little slide out here and also down here. And this connects to a live librarian right now. And you can chat with a live librarian. You can also send a text message. Here is our text texting number. And this will send a direct text to a librarian. And you can also connect to a Zoom room for the library. So if you click on connect to room, you'll get connected into a Zoom room with a librarian and you can talk to a librarian that way. Uh, librarians are only available during these times here. So for our remote chat, text and Zoom hours, we're available Monday to Thursday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Friday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. We have no remote services for Saturdays and Sundays, but if you send a text message or an email, or a library help ticket, uh, which would be available to do when this chat box is offline. You can send your help, your request for help that way, and the librarian can uh, respond back to you the next business day. So I hope you found this video to be helpful, and please don't hesitate to come to the library and ask a librarian for help if you need it. All right, good luck.